So I've got three jobs here. One is a continuous improvement leader in California at McKesson, a healthcare company. The second one is a senior analyst position in India at General Mills, a consumer goods company. And the third one is an operations manager job in Dubai at Tesla, which is a tech company we all know. Now these three jobs are in three different countries in three different industries, but they all have one thing in common. They all require the skill of critical thinking. Now, how do we demonstrate critical thinking in a job interview or even at work? Well, in this four part video series, I will use a real life example to demonstrate the four steps of critical thinking, which will give you exactly the type of context and idea that you need to bring in examples from your real life, whether they are in academics or from your work experience in your next job interview or even at work. My name is Jamil Hai and I've been working in management positions across South Asia, Middle East and North America for the last 20 years. And my mission is to help you build real life skills for your job and career that they don't teach you in college. So let's explore the first step of critical thinking. The first step of critical thinking is problem identification and data gathering. Let me give you a real life example. Many years ago, I was working on a business where we had a lot of availability issues in fulfilling orders to our customers. In very simplistic terms, seven out of 10 times we were unable to fulfill our orders or our service rate was approximately 70%. Now that's a huge problem because the industry standard is about 98%. So having a service level of 70% when the industry standard is 98 is a problem on its own. So the first step for a critical thinking mind in this case would be to write a problem statement. Some time ago, I had made a video on how to write a problem statement and I covered the SMD model, which stands for specific, measurable, and something that defines the gap. So if I were to apply that approach in this case, I would say that our service to our customers is 70%, the industry standard is 98%, and therefore we are 28% below the standard. In this case, we are very specific about a KPI. We are talking about where we are today, which is measurable, and we are also defining the gap versus the standard. Now bear in mind that I'm keeping this very, very simple so that most of you can grasp this concept. Now that we have defined the problem statement, the next part of this step is to gather data. Now, how do you gather data? There are a number of different ways. The first and the foremost way is to get all the reports available. So in this case, we got the service level reports, we got the forecast accuracy reports, we got the production actuals report because as we will try to understand why our service is so bad, we will need to look at not just this KPI on its own, but we will also have to look at some of the other measures in the business which eventually feed the service level. Why are some of these other reports important? Because maybe our service is bad because our forecast accuracy is not good, which means that we are not telling our factories what to produce. So therefore we need the forecast reports. Similarly, we also need to know the production actuals report because maybe we are getting the right forecast, but we are still serving badly because we are not producing what our customers are telling us. That could be another reason. So we need to understand all the different dynamics of the business which are influencing service in the end. The second part of data gathering is getting some verbal feedback. So this can come through surveys or interviews with the different stakeholders. So in this case, we spoke to the people sitting at the plants, in the sales teams and marketing teams and so on. Now, one thing to keep in mind is as you do these interviews, you will see a lot of opinions, emotions, narratives and facts all coming out at the same time. Your success as a critical thinker is to filter out the facts from emotions. So in this case, when we spoke to the sales team, there is a lot of emotion coming out because you know when you, the service is bad, it negatively impacts the relationship with the customers. Similarly, with the marketing folks, when the service is bad, that definitely means that some of the marketing dollars they are spending are not converting into sales because our service is bad. So a lot of different emotions would come out, but then in these emotions, you will also start getting facts. The other thing which you are doing by interviewing stakeholders as a critical thinker is that you are making the organization feel that you are listening. You are actually serious about solving the problem and therefore you are providing your ear to your internal customers and you are very serious about improving the service in this case. So indirectly while you are doing these surveys or interviews, you are improving your relationships with your key stakeholders. 
So now we come to the end of step number one where we have defined the problem statement and we have collected a lot of data, we have interviewed a lot of people. Now in the next step of critical thinking, we will need to analyze this data and capture assumptions, which we will cover in our next video.